What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam and this week we have another new release announcement and review of an airplane from Horizon Hobby. This is the new E-Flight Decathlon RJG 1.2 meter. RJG stands for RJ Gritter and for those of you that don't know, RJ is one of us. He cut his teeth flying RC airplanes and did it at the professional level. He's now a professional full-scale airshow pilot and he performs his routine in this beautiful Super Decathlon. Now those of you that watch the channel might know that I like to do scale aerobatics, airshow style routines with a bunch of different types of airplanes. And part of the way that I've gotten good at that is watching full scale pilots on YouTube perform their routines. I've had my eye on RJ Gritter for several years now and now he has his unlimited airshow pilot waiver which means he can fly as low as he wants to fly. His air show is very impressive. He reminds me of Bob Hoover and John Moore. Now, I get what a compliment that is, and I don't take it lightly. Those men were known for their energy management skills. And you have to understand, when it comes to a Super Decathlon, it's a basic aerobatic trainer. It's not that it isn't capable, but it's a far cry from a fully composite, near 400 horsepower super plane like an Edge 540. In fact, the Edge 540T, the two-seater variant of an Edge 540, weighs a little less than a Super Decathlon and has twice the horsepower. So to do what RJ does with the Super Decathlon in his airshow routine takes a lot of energy management skill and it is truly impressive. Look him up on YouTube and treat yourself. Like most T-flat airplanes, getting the Decathlon together is a simple process that's covered well in the manual. The part count's very low. They'll start you with the main landing gear assembly. You simply put them in place, put the gear cover on, and use six machine screws to attach that. Then you'll move to the tail section. I actually put the horizontal and vertical together first. You bring it down on top of the fuse. You'll use two self-tapping screws underneath to attach the tail, and a single self-tapping screw to keep the rudder in line with the pivot point. Before you put that screw in, be sure that you plug in the wire for the tail LED. Then you'll move on to the main wing. It's a tongue and groove up front, and when you bring the back down, a single plug automatically plugs the servo and lights in for you. You'll use two thumb screws to tighten that down. When you do this, be sure and put the airplane on the corner of the bench so that you can allow the struts and jury struts to just hang down. Once you get the wing on, you can turn the airplane over, do jury struts or a simple squeeze and slide into two slots, and then the main strut simply snaps into place. At this point, you're pretty much done. The prop and spinner come pre-attached. I do suggest going ahead and taking that prop and spinner off Check the balance of the prop. Mine was fine, but it's worth checking anyway and also making sure that the prop is tight. Don't just trust that that's perfect from the factory. While you have the prop off, go ahead and set your transmitter up, bind the airplane to your transmitter. You'll have to hook up the ball links to the elevator and rudder and go ahead and take this time to center your control surfaces and then put that prop back on. This decathlon is a looker. It has a 47.7 inch wingspan. It's 34.64 inches long. Our example weighs two pounds, 15.9 ounces, okay, three pounds, with the recommended Spectrum 4S 2230 C pack. It has a brushless 3536 1030 kV 14 pole motor and four digital 9 gram Metal Gear servos. It's intended for 1800 to 3200 three and four S packs. As you just saw, the Decathlon RJG is sold as a plug and play or a bind and fly. Obviously, with the plug and play, you choose and install your receiver and protocol of choice. This one is the bind and fly, so that's what we'll be reviewing today. It is a five channel airplane. You have elevator, rudder with a steerable tail wheel, ailerons, throttle, and you can use that fifth channel to switch between AS3X and optional safe select, which you get with the Spectrum Smart AR631 receiver that comes installed in the Bind and Fly. It also has the Avian Smart Light 45 amp ESC, so because of that, you get the standard fair or smart telemetry if you have a compatible Spectrum transmitter. You'll have flight log information, minimum and maximum voltage for your flight pack and your receiver, ESC minimum and maximum information, on the fly ESC status, on the fly smart battery voltage, 
a G meter. You'll get gyro and safe limit feedback, access to the Avian ESC programming through the transmitter so that you can program the optional thrust reverse among other things with that smart ESC if you'd like and the receiver comes unlocked from the factory so you can go in and make gain and priority adjustments to the AS3X. One of the nicest features of the decathlon and the thing I noticed right off the bat when I opened the box is the paint job itself. The lower white portion of the fuselage behind this cowling piece is the only part of the airplane that isn't painted or very carefully matched and applied vinyl decals. And if the pictures made it look like it has a clear coat, that's because it does. I don't know if it's poly or some other kind of gloss clear, but it's very shiny, makes everything pop, adds some protection for the paint job, and also makes the vinyls and the paint blend together so that they all appear to be paint. Even the propeller is painted front and back just like RJ's decathlon. The hinging is nice as well. On the rudder, you have CA hinges. On the elevator and ailerons, you have a combination of foam with CA hinge reinforcement. It is a convenient top loader, and the hatch is really nice. It's lined with plastic, as is the fuselage, so you don't chip that nice paint job taking this thing on and off repeatedly. There's plenty of room in there for all the batteries in the recommended size range for 3 and 4S, and this piece is very interesting. It's a small airplane, so storing and transporting this thing together is going to be something that most of us can do, but some of us are going to have to take it apart, thankfully. Removing the wing and the struts is very simple. This piece attaches to the wing like you see here. It gives you something to clip the struts onto so that they don't scratch that nice paint job on the bottom of the wing. When you get to the field and you get the airplane assembled, this piece fits nicely inside the fuse right there gives you a place to keep up with that until you take the airplane apart again and if you look to the right of that should you be a person that leaves this airplane assembled but you decide to upgrade or change your transmitter and you need to rebind it there's a bind plug port right there for you to get to so that you don't have to take the airplane apart to do that all in all it's very pretty very neat very tidy very well thought out the manual makes setting up your decathlon very simple. All the pertinent information is there. There's step-by-step -step instructions for programming your transmitter. It's good to learn how to do that versus just downloading setup files. If you can navigate your transmitter, you can go further into the setup and really get an airplane dialed in just for your tastes. There is CG information, throw information, push rod placement information, expo information, everything you need to get you started and through a successful maiden, and then you can take it from there and really dial it in to your liking. We did deviate from the setup in the manual somewhat. We did make a couple of mechanical changes. We set it up to suit us, made it just a slightly more aggressive setup than normal. Our complete setup info page is next. You can pause that, take a look at our setup, and duplicate that if you'd like. And then immediately we're going to go into the flying. We flew the airplane on four packs, a 2200 three-cell, and then we flew it on 1800, 2200, and 3200 four-cell. The airplane flies fine on all these, but I have to say we do prefer the airplane and its flight characteristics on the three lighter batteries, not so much the 4-cell 3200. You're going to see 3 and 4S flying. Check out the flight demos, and then we'll see you back here on the bench, and we'll give you our final thoughts. Enjoy the flying. This particular afternoon was reasonably windy. It had calmed down a bit by the time we flew it on 3-cell, but it was still blowing constant 3 to 6 with gusts up to around 7 or 8.
it's a slow pass. We'll turn it around and give it the beans on three cell for you. The decathlon makes respectable power on 3-cell. There's more than enough power for sport and scale aerobatics. It can easily sustain a knife edge on three cell. If you've got enough throw programmed in and you get aggressive, it gets aggressive. It does like rudder to coordinate turns given its high wing configuration. We're going to do some grass ups for you. It's no trouble with the decathlon, and right now our grass is a bit rough.
actually did that snap to break up the monotony. I keep going back and forth because the crosswind is slightly changing directions and I wanted to figure out which way to bring it in. This forest flight was much earlier in the evening and the wind was blowing a good bit harder. Constant 6 to 8 with gusts up to about 14. We're going to climb up now and push the throttle forward on four cells. You will notice a distinct difference in speed and climb rate. Plenty of speed and momentum for a pinwheel. And as you'll notice here, she does a really nice inverted flat spin as well. Crosswind definitely made landings a bit of a challenge. It does a nice pop top as well.
I was having a hard time establishing a good hover and holding it where I wanted it in the wind. We did get a better one later, we'll show you. And no, that wasn't it. That was an angry pinwheel because I'm not satisfied with my landings in this wind. Finally, a halfway decent one. The landing gear is a bit bouncy and our runway is rough, so we figured out on a smooth rough surface, three points are the way to go. Here's the hover that's not too bad. You can see the wind blowing me off course, but at least we held it a bit longer. The Decathlon RJG is billed as a scale aerobatic trainer for intermediate to experienced pilots. Clearly, it can handle the scale aerobatic realm just fine, even on 3-cell. When you push it harder, particularly on 4-cell, it is capable of much, much more. It's very smooth, very precise, honest airframe. It's nice that it takes a variety of batteries. That means that most of us are going to have something in our battery box that we could fly this airplane on if we choose to put one in our hangar. Horizon says that this airplane is a skill level 2 airplane. That would make it a good choice after you master a trainer as a second airplane. We agree with that. It'd make a great first tail dragger. You could learn a lot about scale aerobatics with an airplane that really looks the part. And of course you can learn more than that if you want to push it a bit harder, set it up a bit more aggressive on down the line. The price point is $269.99 for the buy and fly, $249.99 for the plug and play. In today's market, we think that's more than a fair price. The fit and finish on this airplane is second to none. It's as good as any foamy that we've ever reviewed. And it's just a really well thought out airframe. It really is, and we think that's a good price. If you decide that you'd like to add a Decathlon RJG to your hangar, we'll put links in the description where you can do just that. When you go through those links, it helps support our efforts still at Model Aviator, and Heidi and I appreciate it when you do that. Thank you. Don't forget to look up RJ Gritter on YouTube and check out some of his more recent air shows. You will be very impressed with what this young man can do with the full-scale counterpart to this beauty. That's it for us. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something else cool with wings.